So nursing responsibilities in a cardiac catheterization inc include for the pre-intervention, um, getting written permission from the patient. Um, we need to know if they have any iodine sensitivity, so we ask if they have a shellfish allergy. We want the patient to be NPO for six hours, and they're going to have a sedative, so we're going to administer a sedative. Um, so contrast dye is used to visualize the vessels during a cardiac cath, and so it's imperative that the patient is not allergic to iodine and has adequate kidney function. So we're going to check the following labs. Uh, we want to check a potassium level, and we also want to check a BUN and creatinine. Um, the, pota the potassium is important for the heart um, to be able to pump, and the BUN and creatinine give us an example of how well the kidneys are functioning. So pre-care teaching includes um, telling the patient there may be a feeling of warmth when the dye is injected, and there may be a fluttering sensation in the heart when the catheter is actually passed. Afterwards, we want to assess the circulation and sensation on the extremity used for the catheter insertion. It's usually the femoral artery. So what would the extremity be that we would want to be checking? Um, it would be, the, in this case, the right uh, lower extremity. So the right lower leg and foot and toes. Make sure they have good circulation, movement, and sensation. We also want to check peripheral pulses, um, color, and sensation about every 15 minutes for an hour, okay? And again, CMS refers to circulation, movement, and sensation. We also want to observe the puncture site for hematoma formation um, and bleeding. So we want to place a compression device over the arterial site and monitor the patient's vital signs. Bleeding and infection and pain can be a complication that can occur where the catheter was inserted. There also may be damage to the blood vessels. Um, this is very rare, but the catheter may scrape or poke a hole in a blood vessel um, as it's threaded into the heart. We could have complications occur such as arrhythmias or irregular heartbeat, and these often go away um, on their own, but may need treatment if they persist. Um, and also blood clots that can trigger a stroke, a heart attack, or other serious problems. So there are always risk factors associated um, with any procedures that we do. Um, there can also be an allergic reaction to the dye, um, and again, damage to the kidneys caused by the dye. So drug treatment for coronary artery disease includes, includes the use of nitrates, warfarin or coumadin, heparin, aspirin, clopidogrel or plavix, and fibrolytic therapy. Nitrates dilate the vascular vessels and relax the smooth muscle. Um, they increase the coronary artery blood flow by dilating the arteries and improving blood flow into the ischemic regions. Um, they produce vasodilation and help drop the blood pressure. Nitroglycerin um, is one of these medications and it decreases left ventricular end diastolic pressure and left ventricular end diastolic volume or preload. So sublingual nitroglycerin has better bioavailability. Um, we do not want the patient to swallow the sublingual nitro, um, only put it underneath the tongue. And if after three doses the patient is still having angina or chest pain or symptoms, they need to go to the ER. Um, warfarin or Coumadin interferes with the blood clotting by depressing hepatic synthesis of vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. Vitamin K is used to reverse the effects of Coumadin. Patients are sometimes instructed to avoid foods rich in vitamin K, for example green leafy vegetables. However, some physicians allow such a diet as long as the intake is consistent on a daily basis and the PT-INR is carefully monitored. 
So the labs to monitor if our patient is on Coumadin are the PT or the prothrombin time and the INR or the international normalized ratio. Today's Coumadin dose affects blood clotting two to seven days later. Heparin is an antithrombin activator. This effect is immediate. We want to check the PTT every six hours while the patient is on a heparin drip. Other antiplatelets are aspirin and clopidogrel or Plavix. And here's an example of the coagulation pathway and we can see um, where Coumadin therapy um, interferes with the coagulation pathway and we could also look over onto the other side and see where heparin interferes um, in the intrinsic system of the coagulation pathway. So fibro, fibrinolytic therapy, um, an example of this would be a medication called Retivase. It dissolves the thrombus that's associated with an MI um, so that the myocardium can be perfused. Um, this is ideally given within the first hour after the onset of symptoms and the time window is approximately six hours. So if the treatment occurs within six hours, there's a 25% reduction in mortality. But because um, this thrombolytic therapy increases the risk of bleeding, retivase is contraindicated in the following situations. If the patient has known active internal bleeding, such as a GI bleed, if they have a history of a stroke, if they have a recent intracranial or intraspinal injury or trauma, if they have intracranial neoplasm or arteriovenous malformations or aneurysms, or if they have a known bleeding tendency such as hemophilia. Uh, also in a case of severe uncontrolled hypertension. So when all else fails, what is the treatment that we use for coronary artery disease? This is coronary artery bypass graft. And uh, what we do is uh, use the patient's mammary artery to bypass the coronary arteries around the occluded site. And this new source of blood supply to the heart is actually distal to where the occlusion was. So here we'll, we'll watch a video. So here's a picture depicting coronary artery bypass graft um, and we can see a blockage in the coronary artery and then we can see that there's um, been a new vessel put in place from the aorta just distal to the blockage um, and this restores perfusion. So our patients um, following a cabbage will be on telemetry, um, so we'll be monitoring their heart rhythm. Uh, they will be intubated and ventilated. They will have a nasogastric tube. They will have a Foley catheter. They will have chest tubes to drain the chest cavity of fluid and blood. Um, and they will have an IV line through which fluids, nutrition, and medicine can be given, and also an arterial line. Uh, which is a short, soft plastic catheter that's placed directly into an artery. This allows for continual blood pressure reading and art arterial blood gas samples. Um, a Swan-Gans catheter is a thin plastic tube inserted into a vein in the neck and threaded down into the heart and pulmonary artery. And it is used to monitor pressures and blood flow within the heart. So recovery from cardiac uh, catheterization, I'm sorry, recover, so recovery from coronary artery bypass graft um, will include cardiac rehabilitation. Um, and this will involve physical therapy, respiratory therapy, um, occupational therapy. The patient will have some extensive diet counseling and also be started um, on an exercise program. 